virtue of the month. Now, does the Ramadan serve as an expiation for um, major sins as well? Does Ramadan count as an expiation for major sins as well or just the minor sins? Okay, so here's a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says that the five daily prayers between one another from salah to salah is a uh, kafara, is an, is an expiation for, for that which is between them. Jum'ah to Jum'ah, Friday prayer to Friday prayer is an expiation between the two. And the Prophet ﷺ says from Ramadan to Ramadan مُكَفِّرَاتٌ مَا بَيْنَهُنَّ إِذَا اجْتَنَبَ الْكَبَائِرِ So the Prophet ﷺ said that these three things serve as expiations between the two of them so long as a person avoided the major sins, authentic or weak. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim, it's an authentic hadith. All right. So Ramadan is basically like your, it's basically like your yearly salah in that sense. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying you have the five daily prayers that eliminate everything between them, all right, the minor sins, and you have um, you know Jum'ah to Jum'ah, Friday prayer to Friday prayer, which eliminates the minor sins between them, and then you have annually Ramadan to Ramadan, which eliminates everything between them, all right. Now the Prophet ﷺ says so long as you avoid al kabair, you avoid the major sins. Now what are the things that forgive major sins, right? Becoming Muslim, Hajj, and one more, Hijrah, all right? The three actions, I'm not, I'm not talking about repentance now, but there are three actions that the Prophet ﷺ said do away with major sins. He said, entrance into Islam, okay, this is a hadith of Amr ibn As anhu. when he became Muslim, there are three things that do away with everything before them. Entering into Islam, doing Hajj, or doing hijrah, or, or migrating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright? Now here's the thing. Let's say that you don't have the opportunity to do those three things. Like should I go commit kufr and then become Muslim again so I can get that one? It seems pretty easy. Just come back and take shahada the next day. It doesn't work that way. You might die in between them, right? But the Prophet ﷺ also teaches us that sincere repentance can do away with anything. So a tawbah and nasuha, the sincere repentance that you might experience in Ramadan, all right, could do away with everything. And Ramadan sets the stage. This is the beautiful thing. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he commented on this hadith. He said, even if Ramadan in and of itself, listen to this beautiful reasoning. He said, even if Ramadan in and of itself is not like Hajj, where the performance of it does away with your previous major sins. He said, there's no time of the year that you're going to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than Ramadan. And there is no time that you're more likely to really sincerely repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than when you're closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan. Right, the closeness we experience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan is unlike the closeness we experience throughout the year. So that's, the, that's your greatest opportunity to just shed a tear. You know, while you're standing up looking for Laylatul Qadr, you shed a tear and you, and, and you really make istighfar, even if you committed adultery, even if you committed a major sin in the past, it would do away with it insha'Allah ta'ala. All right, so the performance of Ramadan in and of itself does not do that. It serves in, you know, it serves in that capacity. Um, but what Ramadan gives you spiritually makes it likely for you, inshallah ta'ala, to experience that sincere repentance which can do away with your major sins.